This iMac cost me $80 and it can run Mojave. So I was on eBay the other day and I noticed somebody had listed a 2009 20 inch iMac. I recognised straight away that this was a 2009 iMac. I used to own one of these back in 2011 with the same specs. It was only £70 with £10 posters on top, but by the off chance I sent an offer of £55 and literally within 5 minutes the buyer accepted. I was over the moon about this as it just cost me in total £65, what is about 80 US dollars. I waited about 3 days and when it arrived, and even to my surprise, it was in such fantastic condition. I booted it up and it worked perfectly the first time running Mac OS Mountain Lion. So when I used to own this model back in 2011, I kept it for a couple of years and one of the upgrades I did was take out the DVD drive and put in back then a 32GB SSD drive instead. Last time I did this, I used iFixit to guide me and I repaid a visit to the site and looked up the aluminium iMac 2009 dual hard drive DVD drive replacement. And it all came back to me that it's a little complicated as you have to take off the screen with suction cups, unplug a bunch of sensors to get down to remove the DVD drive. However, I managed to pull it off again and was successful within under an hour with this iMac and it now has the original 320GB spinny hard drive and a 120GB SSD installed. Now this iMac is a 9.1 model and after a quick look up on the Mac OS X Mojave patches site, I found this iMac can run Mojave without any problems. So to sweet tune Mojave, I had two 2GB DDR laptop RAM sticks lying around and put them in to make the iMac to have 4GB of RAM and installed the patch Mojave. So now I've got an $80 iMac what can run Mojave what is amazing. So let's have a look at the specs while actually on this machine. So a bit more about the actual iMac itself. It is the last ever aluminium 20 inch iMac, an early 2009 unit with a 2.66 gigahertz core 2 duo. It was and came to me with two gigabytes of RAM. We have just upgraded that though to four gigabyte. Also a 320 gigabyte spinny hard drive. But again, we have just removed the DVD drive and put in a 120 gigabyte SSD drive. What the OS will run from. So with that, with the spinny drive, it's a total of 440 gigabytes of space. It also comes with an NVIDIA GeForce 9400M with a 256 megabyte shared graphics. Nothing over powerful, but it gets the job done. There were a few upgrades of installing 120 gigabyte SSD and a caddy to go with it, and also the RAM upgrade in total, which would cost around about 20 pounds, or it's about 25 US dollars. The design of the iMac came out in 2007, and I love this design. I love that Apple was especially keen on bringing the iMac up market with a new design that looks far more premium than the white plastic Intel iMac that they had for a while with the design from the G5 iMac. The fresh newer design looks a bit more modern than the white plastic iMac sort of unibody design and I think the aluminium and the glass just looks really good together. In fact, it's basically still the same design that Apple still uses today, with Apple just focusing on making the iMac thinner really, and making the screens a little more wider with their sizes. In 2007, when they brought out this aluminium design, they did get rid of the older, smaller 17 inch iMac from existence, bringing the 20 inch to the base model, and introducing a 24 inch model as well. That are later evolved to the 21.5 inch and 27 inch screen iMacs that exist today. So one thing I love about this iMac in particular is when it first came out, the first actual specifications, what Apple did was they replaced the plastic um, kind of unibody kind of designed iMacs that they had at that time with this aluminium design what you see right here but the interesting thing that they did was they scrapped the 17 inch model what they used to have then 
and they brought out this 20 inch model as the lowest, well the smallest basically iMac. But the interesting thing that they did was that they made this 20 inch iMac the same price as that old 17 inch one and it had better specs in it as well. What was crazy to keep it the same price. That is like really rare of Apple to do. They hardly do it today. The, the only scenario I could think of is something like saying they bring out the iPhone 7 and then a year later they brought out say the iPhone 10. What well, technically you've gone up from a 4.7 inch screen phone to the 5.8 inch screen phone on an iPhone 10 and keep it at the same price as the 7. That would never happen. Obviously, I know the iPhone 8 did come out, but just forget that for a moment because it wasn't really a whole model redesign. But could you imagine jumping from a 7 to the specs of a 10 and keeping it at the same price? It's just not heard of. And that is what Apple did back then with this type of iMac, what you've got here. Also, what is unique and why you're seeing a lot of reflection, and this did continue to the end of 2011 with iMacs, the display glass on this model is held on with magnets and it can be popped off to access the internals. So there is a gap between the glass and the LCD that you do have to take off the actual LCD as well to get inside. But despite these obstacles removing the glass and LCD, you can do those 29 upgrades that I mentioned earlier with the SSD and the RAM within an hour like I have done here. You could also upgrade the CPU to a 3 GHz dual-core processor as well and that will literally cost you around about £15 or about $19 US for this processor and the only thing that would really stand in your way is getting into the guts of this machine because once you dig down deep enough you should be able to find the CPU and do the upgrade but it is a little tricky to do. That is also a cool thing to note at this point, that all Intel iMacs have a socketed processor. That means you can upgrade the processor. However, make sure you do research into what processors work on each machine. But as to my knowledge, even the current 2019 iMac processors can be upgraded. So back to the performance of this machine, and with a few little upgrades, um, I ran a Geekbench 4 and you can see this iMac has a multi-score of 3209. So that's closely just behind an original Intel Mac Pro with a score of 3619. So we've easily established it's no Intel i9 inside, but it can certainly live on your desk for media and web browsing content and even streaming games from a PS4 or Xbox One over your network. I did also notice that after opening a few tabs on the browser, the iMac does start to heat up. I've noticed this also in my late 2009 MacBook Unibody, the white one, and I'd personally say this is down to the design of the Core 2 Duos being used in 2019. It needs to be worked a lot more harder to perform simple 2019 tasks. Fortunately, you're not going to cause a fire or see smoke rising from it, as the internal cooling just about keeps it cool enough at a reasonable heat. Wi-Fi and Ethernet seems to be working fine on this machine, and I'm guessing on average the same speeds I get on my current Mac Pro from my internet provider, so all good there. Overall, I think this iMac actually gives pretty good value for $80. So as I said earlier, the performance is similar to an original Intel Mac Pro and that costs at least twice as much as what I paid for this iMac here. Now I'm not sure how easily replicable this deal is, as to be honest, as I was happy to pay the asking price before my offer was accepted. Also other sellers sell these iMacs for around about 110 to 130 US dollars without the upgrades that have been put in. But after you do do those upgrades and your total cost should come to around about $150, you have got a good deal for a Mac running the latest software and it's only cost you $150 <laughs> and I think that's definitely worth it. However, you could get lucky like this iMac and it cost, could cost a lot less and you should be able to use this machine for doing such tasks like watching Netflix, YouTube, streaming games, social media, web browsing even the occasional light photo editing using um, the photos apps or even maybe an older version of Photoshop works fine as well. Overall, I believe this is a fantastic budget iMac you've got right here. 
I would recommend this iMac basically for say your kids or for say your grandparents or anybody who's wanted to start on their Apple kind of journey and doesn't want to pay thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds or euros or wherever you're from and just want to get a feel for what Apple is like. You know, I did those upgrades to this iMac like with the SSD drive. You don't have to do that. You can keep the spinny drive and just upgrade the RAM a little bit, maybe up to four gigabytes. Um, what's quite a cheap, easy upgrade to do. And then you've got a fully working, up to date Apple desktop, what was right here. So on that note, I do want to thank you for watching this video and please do like it if you have liked it or dislike if you didn't like it and please leave any comments below as well. I do try my best to read them and get back to you as soon as I can. Please, please also do subscribe. I do loads of videos about old Apple tech and telling you guys how good they are and how they can still be used today just like this iMac right here. So please do subscribe. But until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.